Demon Souls, the first Souls game to exist, is a very interesting case. See, back then there wasn't a Zweihander or a Guts style greatsword. But we do have two swords that kind of fit the niche these two weapons have. Those being, ironically, the Greatsword as the Zweihander and the Dragonbone Smasher as the God's Greatsword. Thankfully, in terms of katanas, we got it covered because the Yuji katana does exist. Alongside Hiltless and Makoto. Uh, sorry, wrong Makoto, I meant this one. Anyway, to start this journey off right, we will go with the royalty and the providential ring. The reasoning is very simple. The royalty is excellent thanks to it starting off at level 1, making it cheaper for us to build a character up, at least early on. And the big reason is because of the starting gear this class has access to. The silver coronet and the silver catalyst boost your maximum mana, in turn making early game much easier, and the fragrant ring provides a constant mana regeneration. All of this just works so well combined with each other. As for the providential ring, the only reason I love picking this item so much is because it will help you earn a lot more grass, especially in the early game. Anyway, with that out of the way, we just have to run through 1-1. If you ever feel lonely, remember, these guys will always fall for you. The biggest challenge you will face early on will be tackling the Red Knight. You don't have to do this, but it only takes about a minute or two and you will end up rewarded with a lot of souls, so I personally think it is worth taking him out. Next, you want to grab the Kling Ring. Technically, you don't need this item, as long as you are confident you will not die at all. But for the strategy I want to present, this thing is required. I will explain why later. On the topic of rings, you also want to loot the Thief Ring to help you sneak around some areas later on. Once you got that, you're gonna make your way over to the Dragon Bridge and bait the dragon out. He will clear the bridge up for you and in the meantime you will be able to run back to the other dragon and pick up the grass and the souls on the ground. The only things you have to do now is pull the lever to start the boss fight and grab the pine resin nearby. Bombs away and you will finish in no time. Now then, we return home, talk to the monumental, get a few levels and make haste towards the shrine of storms. First of all, the Yuchigatana is here. If this is all you care about, your journey is over. Second of all, this is also the place where we can find the Crescent Falcon, which, in my opinion, is an amazing early game weapon for a mage build. Last but not least, the Adjudicator is an easy boss we can take out for a good chunk of souls. And not only that, but we can skip to him very easily, making this a very short level to tackle. Oh and, I almost forgot we also get the Regenerator Ring along the way. You can never go wrong with this thing. Back to the Nexus again. Level up some more, and now we can go to the Lord's Path and take out the Tower Knight. If you want to get the Zweihander, you have to go this way, but if let's say you only care about the God's Greatsword, you can skip this step. Anyway, because we got the Crescent Falcon, we can kill the Tower Knight pretty much under a minute, which is great. But here's the next big problem. The game essentially locks you out of progressing any further in this world, and if you want to keep going, you will have to take out the final boss of any other world. In our case, we are going after the Dragon God within Stonefang Tunnel. You can remain in body form up until the Armored Spider. It's very likely you will not die, but if you want to stay safe, you know what to do. Before I go any further, let me explain why you don't want to die in body form in this area. If you want to pick up the God's Greatsword, you will need to have pure white war tendency. And the way you will achieve this is by defeating the Armored Spider and the Flame Lurker. But here's a little problem. If for any reason you end up dying while human, you will lose a percentage of your war tendency. To avoid that, you want to die outside of Stonefang Tunnel to get rid of the human form. Now you can die as much as you want without it affecting your world tendency. The hardest part of this run is gonna be the Flame Lurker, and I recommend using Water Veil to help you survive better, otherwise you run the risk of getting one tapped. When you finish him off, you can go back to the Nexus, level up some more, maybe even get rid of your body form just to be safe, and then you're ready to face off against the Dragon God. What I like to do here is run in, grab the sword, 
and then use an axial binding to get out safely, and then get back in with a clear mind so I can focus on the fight. It's not anything too difficult, it's pretty much a puzzle, but you can mess it up if you are not careful enough. Anyway, once you kill the Dragon God, you can return to the inner ward, and from here, you go up towards the stairs, run past the guards, up the alley where they send a rolling fireball towards you, turn to the right, go into the building, and your Zweihander is here. Dark Souls 1. I have been waiting for this. I would say that the most iconic weapon in the entire game is the Zweihander. If you haven't had the chance to play this game yet, allow me to ask you a question. How do you make a pancake? There are essentially two ways you can do it. One is easy, and the other one is hard. Considering that each and every single one of us is a Dark Souls player here, I will start by explaining the hard way. Ok, so you take a bowl, you add an egg, some flour, milk, salt, sugar, some baking powder, you mix it together, you then cook the mix on a heated stove, and you're done. If you want to do the easy way, just go to the cemetery in Firelink Shrine, grab the Zweihander, and use a homeward bone to escape safely. Now all your enemies will turn into a pancake. I wish I could turn all my problems into a pancake. One of these problems is gonna be obtaining the greatsword later on. Not that it's very difficult, but we have to play through a good chunk of the game in order to reach it. But you know the saying, we will cross that bridge when we get there. Until then, we still have one important thing we have to take care of. And that's right, I am talking about the Yuchi Katana. Just go up the undead berg, defeat the merchant, and you have officially obtained the weapon, which turns any strength build enthusiast into a dexterity lover. Next, you take out the tortoise demon, activate the shortcut, then go back up the bridge and wait for the dragon to come down. Grab the next bonfire and rush to the parish. Activate yet another shortcut, this time the elevator to Firelink Shrine, defeat the gargoyles, ring the bell, and it's time to leave. Once you are back home, don't forget to give Lothrek a lesson in gravity, and make your way down to Blighttown, summon Mildred because at this point you are probably too weak to fight Quelag, and also make sure not to skip her cutscene. Ring the second bell, go back to Firelink Shrine, and rush to Sans Fortress. You want to get to the very top, and here comes what I believe to be the hardest part of these games, the platforming sections. Thankfully, it's just a jump. Once you are here, you want to use Quailak's soul and buy the greatsword from the Crestfallen Merchant. Time for everyone's favorite. Dark Souls 2. Your class shouldn't matter too much, you can go with anything you would like, but the aesthetic is pretty much mandatory. It just makes the early game so much better. Anyway, go to Majula, kill Molly for the armor set, walk over to Hyde's tower, cheese the dragon rider, and make sure to also kill Lucia for the key. Go back to the first bonfire in Hyde's tower, use the aesthetic, cheese him again, and now we can finally start playing the game. When it comes to the levels, I just wanted to be able to use the rapier once I get it, and also have a decent amount of HP and stamina. For the time being, just go through the Forest of Fallen Giants, spend 10,000 souls at Melantia to get the plus one silver serpent ring from her, then take out the last giant and the pursuer. Over at the Lost Bastille, you want to grab the Dull Ember, the Large Titanite, and the Fragrant Branch. Make your way over to Macduff, give him the Ember, and you can now buy the Yuji Katana. I also get a couple of large Titanite shards for my rapier so I can take it all the way to plus 6. We go back to Majula, grab a few alluring skulls, and go towards the Shaded Woods. After you unpetrify Rosabeth, throw away your skulls so that the Hollows will not follow you, and then you want to rush to the Ruined Fork Road. First and foremost, we have to talk to the head of Vengarl and pick up the greatsword and the gold pine resin from him. This is why I have been saving one of the Dragon Rider souls. Anyway, you might be wondering why I am buying the greatsword from him, instead of just picking it up from the chest in No Man's Wharf. And the answer to that would be time saving. 
I would need to come this way to grab the Chlorenti Ring and the Titanite Chunk anyway. So I might as well kill two birds with one stone and also buy the sword while I'm in the area, right? If you are not worried about time efficiency and you want to use this weapon pretty much right away, then feel free to rush to No Man's Wharf after the Dragon Rider. For now, we have to focus on getting to the Iron Keep for the Zweihander. Thankfully, getting there is not too difficult. Huntsman's Cops is a relatively calm area. Unless you're heading towards the Undead Chariot. And the Harvest Valley is also a pretty easy area. Generally speaking, the hardest part is always the player. Urban Peak, on the other hand, can be a bit of a pain. Oh, and don't forget to burn the windmill down. Mita becomes a cakewalk after you do this. Now comes the real challenge. Iron Keep. I love this area, but I have to admit, sometimes it can be a little overwhelming. We take out the majority of the alone knights, and once you're on the bridge that leads to the Smelter Demon, you have to face off the hardest boss of all time, jumping. If you succeed, you will be rewarded with the greatest gift imaginable, the famed Zweihander. If you fail, death awaits you. So, what will it be? Bearer of the curse, I will always be at your side. Until hope has fully withered. We return to Yarnum, and now we shall go through Bloodborne yet again. But there's no greatsword in Yujigatana. So what do we do then? Ludwig's Holy Blade may act as the Zweihander and Greatsword. And the Uchigatana is the Chikage. Please, don't grab your pitchforks. Away! Away! After your slumber, it's time to wake up and start your mission. Don't give me that look, come on. Where is your motivation? Leave Yosefka's clinic, and while you're at it, never look back. And start searching for some items as you deal with these comebacks. Once you find the lamp, you want to return to the hunter's dream. Old man Gerdman is here, feeling good with the figurine. Let them be happy and go back to Yarnum City. Take out Father Gascoin. Remember, Molotovs are nasty. From the Cathedral Ward to Old Yarnum we go. Jura's on the hunt, so you might want to lay low. The Starving Beast is the target, you want to hurry. Fire papers and cocktails. Do not show him mercy. Upon his defeat, a new patch shall open. The greatest of weapons. Don't let it go unspoken. For now, we can't afford it, so we need to get going. This only makes me wish I could kill Gideon, the all-knowing. Instead, we must aim for Amelia, the Vicar. I know it seems tempting, but please, don't try to lick her. This will make you rich, so go on, buy the sword. Time for some dungeons. I hope you won't get bored. Fighting these bosses will make you feel malice, but you have to do it for the Tumeru Root Chalice. The Chikage lies here, tucked in a chest so far away. But it is what I seek, so let us be on our way. That said, be warned, this place will have you dying. But in the end, I know you will keep trying. With both weapons in hand, your quest is now over. It's time for Dark Souls 3. And suddenly, I feel older. This is going to be a unique case, as we have to complete a quest in order to obtain one of the weapons. For now, just create your character. I went with a mercenary because of the twin blades, and my gift was the life ring for some early survivability. But if you want, you could also pick the fire bombs for a quicker gun deer run. Next, you want to fight the samurai outside of Firelink Shrine. Here's the thing, we are not gonna fight him. Instead, we're gonna let him fight the hardest boss of all time, as I previously mentioned it. Reload your game so you can take his loot. One weapon down, two to go. 
You could also just skip this following step, but I love doing it to grab the Silver Serpent Ring. It makes a world of difference, especially early on. Inside the Firelink Shrine, the first thing we have to do is buy a dagger from the Shrine Handmaid. I will explain why this is gonna be helpful later on. Then upgrade your flask and get some levels. When it comes to the High Wall of Lothric, you want to make sure to grab the Tower on the Wall bonfire. If you want a Zweihander, you have to start doing Grey Red's questline. And this bonfire allows you to reach him pretty quick. First, you want to grab the key to free him, and then you want to bone out. Or die. Anything works. Go to his cell, accept his request, and now you can make your way over to Wart. Take him out, and then get ready for the Undead Settlement. My checklist for the area was grabbing Loretta's bone, lighting the dilapidated bridge bonfire, and picking up the Mortician's ashes. You could also grab the Bone Shard if you're brave enough. Then we return to Firelink, we give Grey at the bone, and then you have to reload the game until you get the dialogue where he is telling you he wants to go and do some thief business. The way the system works is that he will be gone from the shrine until you defeat one boss. In our case, it's gonna be the Curse Rotted Great Wood. But before you fight this thing, I recommend grabbing at least one Pine Resin from the Shrine Handmade. It's a cheap consumable that will make the fight much faster. Once you're done with Mikala, you can return to Grey Rat and buy the Zweihander from him. And now comes the Great Sword. This is where the dagger will come in handy. You know how Dark Souls 3 has a lot of swamps, even more so than usual. The way we are gonna get through the swamp quickly is by using the dagger. It has a skill called Quick Step and that will allow you to essentially dash through the swamp without being slowed, whatsoever. But anyway, we're here because of the greatsword, so just pick it up. I feel like when it comes to Elden Ring, I always end up making a joke regarding it being a shopping simulator. I have no regrets. Anyway, we start with the samurai, and with that, we already have it covered when it comes to one of the weapons we need. For your starting gift, you also want the lens between rune. We have to buy the Zweihander from a merchant, and this thing is almost gonna cover the entire cost of it. For now, light up the grace near Vare, and afterwards, we just go to the gate front, grab Torrent, and we make haste towards Kaelid for the greatsword. I believe the quickest way to get there is by going through Stormhill, up to Summon Water Village, and beyond that, we go up the hill take a right, and keep going until you see some puppies next to a cart. You can find the greatsword here. Then you want to teleport back to the first step, and for the time being, you just want to reach the Weeping Peninsula. On the way there, you want to grab a golden rune too. And then you want to make your way over to the southern part of the peninsula, and you will find the merchant who sells it here. Mission complete. Now then, with all of the runs completed, it is time to see how much time each and every single one of them has taken. Coming in last place with a 1 hour, 24 minutes and 30 seconds time, Demon Souls. I feel like if I could beat Flame Ripper reliably this could be done much faster, but anyhow. On 5th place, only barely ahead of Demon Souls. Sitting at 1 hour, 23 minutes and 59 seconds. We have Bloodborne. I swear, I am not doing this on purpose or anything, it just always ends up being number 4. Of course, Dark Souls still, with 1 hour, 7 minutes and 15 seconds. Third place goes to the beloved Dark Souls 1, with 49 minutes and 41 seconds. Second place coming in with 33 minutes and 32 seconds, Dark Souls 3. And number 1, I think everybody saw this one coming. Elden Ring, with 13 minutes and 45 seconds. And that wraps up yet another run, and I hope this format was enjoyable. If you would prefer I just focused on one weapon instead, please let me know and I will, at some point, redo it with only one sword in mind. I want to say thank you for watching, and I hope you will have a great day ahead of you.
Spring is finally here, so don't forget to enjoy the outdoors a little from time to time. But for now, I just want to say thank you once again, and I will see you again soon. Take care, everybody. You may rest here too, if you like.